guess who's back, guys? Slim Shady. Good again. Benny's back. That felt weird. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how it feels. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know. But you know what, guys? Yeah, it is. It is confirmed. Um, I do, in fact, have COVID. Unfortunately. So, yeah, I'm sitting at home right now. I've been sitting at home for a bit. You know what? I've had a lot of time on my hands, though. Okay. Um, and what, I've taken what could up, you be doing with such time, Ben? I, I took up a new hobby. A new hobby, you say? Yeah. I uh, I built a rocket, and I shot it into my neighbor's yard. How'd they feel about that? They were not happy. <laughs> 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 but that made them huh. build a fence that we needed to build anyway, so I'd call it a win. Oh. I see this as an absolute Sweet. win. <laughs> yeah, absolute win. One, but it's just, one it's just... you made a rocket, which is just kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Two, bada bing, bada boom, fence made. Yep. You know, yep. But it just got me thinking, you know, it's like, what if you wanted to, like, have a character where all you did was just build random stuff while it's locked in your house, you know, and then launch it at people randomly? And then yeah. I remembered... You guys are covering Artificer. It was perfect timing. <laughs> that is true. We did indeed, cover indeed. Last week. And we totally didn't forget it about it as a class thing that happened in Tasha's. <laughs> Definitely didn't happen. <laughs> totally knew about it the whole time. That being said. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Traveler's Tips and Tales. My name is Ben. I'm Mike. And my name is Jake. And today we're talking about specifically our favorite artificer infusions. Yeah. Yes. Now, what is an infusion? What is an infusion? An infusion is a thing, as I was been informed by Jake, the one who just asked the question for some reason, that <laughs> an infusion is kind of like a magic item that artificers get to make in their spare time, kind of like. Wizards get to learn spells, and druids get to do druid stuff. Artificers get to make infusions. Mm -hmm. So, like, extra magic items that you get just to make whenever. Just because you feel like it. Because you feel like it. I mean, they're they're similar to invocations and whatnot, where they have, like, prerequisites of, of certain class levels and whatnot. And some require attunement, some don't. But, I mean, you're an artificer, so that doesn't matter too much. Because, you know, you've got... Six of those bad boys by level, what, like 18? <laughs> so, yeah. Yep, yep. But yeah, they're super cool, and there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can't really get otherwise. Like, it's just basically like a list of custom magic items that only artificers can make. Yeah. Which is kind of cool how they have, like, their own niche category that, like, no one else could dip into you know like you have to yeah. be like an artificer a person of the trade to to be able to make these kind of things and it makes them a lot harder to be like mass produced and more common and well known i feel like it adds a little bit of rarity to all of them even though they don't technically have rarities yeah they don't have rarities but that being said i would love to give out some of these as a dm starting with and i think this one would be great because it's confusing it's just confusing enough to be useful. <laughs> it's called the Boots of the Winding Path. Okay. Essentially, these boots let you teleport. Sounds cool, nice. right? Pretty Sounds neat. great. Pretty neat. Until you get into cool. the, in the nitty gritty of this particular <laughs> item. Um, the prerequisites, you have to be level 6, and you have to have a pair of okay. boots that require attunement. So it does right. require attunement. But you basically just need a pair of boots, and then you can make them into these things. You can take a pair of mismatched boots you found on the bottom of a lake. True. I'm, I'm pretty sure boots are pretty easy to get in D&D 5e. Oh, I don't yeah. even think they have a gold price nope. like set in the books. So, Because well, it depends on how nice your boots are. True, true, true. But while wearing these boots, a creature can teleport up to 15 feet as a bonus action to an unoccupied space the creature can see. Sounds I like good. it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, so what are you talking about? It's a great item. The creature must have occupied that space at some point during the current turn. Oh, 
So, so you're like going backwards. You're about going backwards, exactly. Now, <laughs> hey, ben, teleporting I boots. This, on one I think hand. this item. I think this item just got a lot less useful. <laughs> this, uh, no, no, no. This, Hear me this... out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> you run in. Hear me out. Mm-hmm. You run in. Let's mm-hmm. say theoretically, you're in a volcano and there's a lich, and you're like, I gotta tackle this lich <laughs> into this volcano, right? So you run and you tackle this lich, and boom, into the volcano. But lucky you, bonus you just action. Pop, you just pop 15 feet back up to the top. <laughs> See, <laughs> lucky you, you just happen to have these boots instead of having to use. Ten. Two turns, a bonus action to heal, water walking, and then climbing out of a <laughs> volcano by hand. You could just do it real quick like that. You know what, Ben? I think you sold me. <laughs> what a very, what a very common problem that I have that could easily be solved with a couple of uh, boots of the winding path. <laughs> here's, here's, here's what, here's what I find funny with these boots, right? These okay. to me should be called the boots of Nope. <laughs> nope. Boots. Because because you just imagine what, this, right? Because Ben just posed a very very uh, very common situation that we experienced. <laughs> but let me go ahead and just give you a very rare, very precise instance. Uh, you walk into a room, see uh, a lot of people that are angry and mad at you and want to kill you. So you nope your way fifteen feet out and start running away. That's true. You could also nope. Like I said, I, I mean, like I said, very specific <laughs> compared to Ben's very common one. But I'm, I'm I feel like it had to be said. Hear me out. I you personally... round a corner. You round a corner. You run. You see, let's say for some weird reason, an aboleth in front of you, and then you just <laughs> fifteen feet, and then you run the other way. Guys, I'm starting to feel like this is going to be the oddly specific episode part two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, I mean, I personally am a fan of the idea of getting to name these items as an artificer because, hypothetically, you're making these items from scratch. Like, the, technically, like, you could write it as this is your creation. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Like, as an artificer, you, like, no one taught you that this item existed. You just thought it up yourself and decided to make it. So, I fully agree with you could name it whatever the hell you want. You could. You could call it whatever your character's name is, is, you know, like like Michael's boots of nope, you know. I don't I don't care. Like spells have some certain certain spells have are named after people, so you can What if instead of boots it was just boots like what not too? What if instead of boots it was like sandals made of rope that you just wrapped around your feet and you call them nope ropes? <laughs> nope ropes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. You you sold me on the boots, Ben. You really did. But hear me out. I'm talking oh. about a repulsion shield, all right? Also prerequisite of a sixth level artificer, and it requires a shield and it requires attunement. I'm not gonna lie, this, this already pretty, sounds uh... like it's probably gonna be a lot more useful than the one I picked. <laughs> <laughs> already, um, at the very beginning, the creature gains a plus one bonus to armor class while wielding a shield. Shields already give a plus two, so that means this is a plus one shield. Therefore, you get plus three to your armor class by equipping this shield. Total. Keep that in mind. Also, the shield has four charges. While holding it, the wielder can use a reaction immediately after being hit by a melee attack to expend one of the shield's charges and push the attacker up to 15 feet away. The shield regains 1d4 expended charges daily at dawn. Now, Ben, tell me. You're in a volcano. You run up to the lich. You don't tackle him. You let him try and hit you. Because what's the lich going to do? You're you're up in his face. You know? What else is he going to do? He's going to try a melee attack. Whether it's a melee spell attack or a melee attack, no matter what, it's a melee attack. So he does it. And then you say, welcome to my Michael's Nope Shield. <laughs> I like how and Michael is the, is the artificer in well, all because, of these scenarios. He thought of the, the, the naming it yourself, your own thing. Welcome to Jake's Nope Shield. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you bop him 15 feet back. Now he's in the lava. What's he going to do? He already used his action to try and hit you. What's he going to do? Featherfall? Okay. Sounds good to me. Enjoy the lava when you get there, buddy. <laughs> 
and you're safely up there, never even getting putting yourself in the 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 heat of the fire. You know what I mean? I feel it. I feel it. I'm still mad about my scalpel. <laughs> In this instance, your scalpel would still be here, man. Yeah, no, I needed an artificer at the time to just make me a new scalpel, man. I was really hoping that when he got married, one of you guys would bother to get me a scalpel, but no one did. Listen. And that's why he stayed on the island. We don't have the means of getting a scalpel, especially when we're on vacation. Listen. On an island that we've never been to. If I'm going to get you a scalpel, it's going to be an enhanced scalpel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not. We're not... I'm not going to get you a, I'm gonna tell a you guys lame gift. About the enhanced weapon infusion. Okay. Oh. Uh, this requires either a simple or martial weapon. That is it. Oh. He segue. This magic <laughs> weapon grants a plus one bonus <laughs> to attack and damage rolls made with it. And the bonus increases to plus two when you reach 10th level in this class. Dude, you can turn a plus three weapon into a plus five weapon if you wanted to. You know what? Actually, I guess you're right. Yeah, because it doesn't say that it can't already be a magical item. <laughs> this is... That's... Eh. Hear me out. Hear me out. I Can another so. artificer do that to an already enhanced No, weapon? because you're making the item, aren't you? <clears throat> so unless you could make that magic item... And then, even then, technically, well, that's no, confusion. No, it only requires a simple or martial uh, weapon. I don't know how I'd rule this. I'd say you just have a god slaying weapon as long as you have that infusion on there. Here, let me let me read to you. Know. Let me read to you what the artificer infusion description says, uh, specifically the part that pertains to this. Uh, the description of each of the following infusions details the type of object that can receive it. Mm-hmm. So you're not necessarily creating a weapon from scratch. You're taking mm-hmm. an already existing weapon and giving it plus one or plus two. But this one also one. doesn't say that it needs an item beforehand. Like the other ones, the boots said you need a pair of boots. And my shield said you need a shield. This one does it say item, like... a simpler martial weapon. Yeah, but it's, it doesn't say, uh, I guess, yeah. <laughs> it, it's the exact same thing as what you guys had. <laughs> I, I hate to be this guy, but I think Michael's right. I know I'm right. As much as I as much as I hate agreeing yeah. with Michael, I think I, he's right. I hate it when Michael's right. <laughs> I put thought into this before I spoke. I, I used my brain. Mm. I don't use it very often, but I use it this one time. See, that's why we don't like acknowledging when you're right because you're usually yeah. pretty pretty right. <laughs> <laughs> I much prefer it when you're pretty wrong. <laughs> and that does not happen often. It happens a lot more on this podcast than it does in my daily life. <laughs> it happens true. usually. It's true. Usually, it's on Mondays. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Wednesdays. <laughs> or Sundays when we're recording the podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's when my brain says no. I got the no. brain of nope. <laughs> no. The brain of nope. Well, you know what, man. Sometimes. It's just be like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that you could probably put that on a magic item and just a magic weapon that's already like a plus... Plus three would be exceptionally good. Yeah. Um, And then... But that, I guess that falls to the DM to be like, don't give them plus three weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or if the artificer gets it, just pull out a, like a three point five stat block. You'd be like, "Ethereal filter, go steal that thing." <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what, man? You might be wrong sometimes, Mike, and you might, you might be right a lot more of the times. But you know what? Sometimes you don't have to do it all by yourself, and that's why the homunculus servant is so good. The infusion homunculus servant. Mm-hmm. Or if you're a, uh, if you happen to be a fan of a certain anime, and you just want to play out your your dreams, we just gonna I'm keep like... dancing around the bush, or yep, yeah, yep. They don't sponsor us. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess no free promotion. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I guess. Uh, I don't know if you. I think it's like. 
something about like an artificer alchemist who wears like full metal armor or something like that. Oh, I thought it was about some dude in glasses who like has has a daughter and a dog. Shut up! Shut up, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Moculus Servant. Prerequisites level 6. Uh, and a gem worth at least 100 gold. Or, if you're in a Eberron specific campaign, a uh, Dragon Shard. So that's pretty neat, I would say. Nice, nice. Yeah, sure. uh, you learn intricate methods for magically creating a special homunculus that serves you. The item you infuse serves as the creature's heart, around which the creature's body instantly forms. So you give him a heart. Nice. Isn't that nice? Robot needs a heart. Someone should have given my homunculus a brain. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> you determine the homunculus's appearance. Some artificers prefer mechanical-looking birds. Uh, whereas some like winged vials or a miniature and anim animate cauldrons, but you could do whatever you wanted with it. Yeah. I probably would do. I guess I don't really have an artificer to compare it to. I would probably do like a blob, just like an ugly blob of meat. It's just like, yeah, that's my, it's my pet. <laughs> Technically, isn't it supposed to be like robotic or magical in some way? Not like. Yeah, that's pretty magical. It's okay. a blob of meat. I... I... I guess, but okay. <laughs> uh, the homunculus is friendly to you and your companions. It obeys your commands. See this creature's game statistics. It's homunculus servant stat block. It's, that's what it is. <laughs> In combat, the homunculus shares your initiative count, but it takes on its turn immediately after yours. It can move or use its reaction on its own. But the only action it takes on its turn is the dodge action. Unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it to take the action in its stat block. Or the dash, disengage, help, hide, or search action. The Monculus regains 2d6 hit points if the mending spell is cast on it. Which, why isn't that a thing for more things? <laughs> <laughs> All constructs should have that ability. Um, <laughs> if it dies, it vanishes, leaving its heart in its place. So sad. It's so sad. Yeah, it. Uh, this thing, it truly gives its heart. It gives its heart for you, for you, my also, friend. Also, also, it goes kaput if you die, and its heart takes its it place there. No, it doesn't. So, yeah, it does. It says if you or the homunculus dies, it vanishes, leaving its heart in its place. Oh, where does it say that? I only see if it dies. Oh. No, it says if you or the homunculus dies. Oh, you know what? I think that's the original print. Let me scroll down to the other one here. I have both. I have the original print, and then I have the one for Tasha's. Well, yep. no, this is... I'm reading this out of the book. <laughs> yeah, so the one in Tasha's is different than the one that released in Eberron. Oh. They upgraded that makes slightly, sense because also, and by that I mean downgraded heavily. They downgraded it. But also in Tasha's, it doesn't have the prerequisite of level 6. Yes, it does. Not in Tasha's. Yeah, in Tasha's, there's no prereq. Really? Yep. It's just it's just the gem worth 100 gold pieces. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. But yeah, the original Eberron one, uh, it, it does not die. So if you're ever in Eberron and you see, like, a flying vial, <laughs> just be <laughs> like, oh, an artificer died and left his pet behind. <laughs> or the artificer actually is good at stealth. Or, yeah, but scared. either way, either way, <laughs> when you look at it, just know that it's worth at least a hundred gold if you kill it. That's fair, I guess. <laughs> kind of messed moral, up, but but touche, good sir. Moral of the story being, uh, if you want to hide your gems, just make a bunch of these things mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and have them just fly around. And when you need one, you just have it fly down to you, and you stroke. You stroke it, and you pet it, and you're like, oh, this is so nice. And then you crush it in your hand, and you're like, here you go. <laughs> so, uh, I've got another item. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Jake, with the, the amazing segues here. This is why I'm not allowed to uh, play Artificer. <laughs> it's a good um, wizard, for that matter. Jake just can't resist it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got an item uh, <laughs> called Resistant Armor. 
It has a prereq of level 6 artificer, and you also need a suit of armor. And this will require attunement. Um, while wearing this armor, a creature has resistance to one of the following damages, which you choose when you infuse the item. And this could be either acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, necrotic, poison, psychic, radiant, or thunder. Uh... <coughs> that's all of them except for you know the basic three bludgeoning slashing and piercing <laughs> <laughs> you could choose whatever you want to be resistant to <coughs> it's all your choice anyways um yeah you could have like air conditioned armor <laughs> <laughs> have resistance to fire damage or something i don't know but yeah i would totally pick like fire or maybe necrotic because i feel like those ones are really common fire necrotic or or like um radiant or poison poison's a good one actually i'd, I'd pick psychic with tasha's coming out maybe i'd pick psychic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of sources of psychic damage now <laughs> oh there was there was none and now there's a lot so yeah <laughs> that might be a good idea yeah but still, I mean, AC armor. Come on. You got you got two ACs, your armor class and your, you know, air conditioning. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think just getting a, a a resistance of your choice, that's amazing. And if you don't like that choice, just uh scrap that item. Like scrap that infusion, which you can do. You could like choose to disassemble them and then remake it with a different, you know, thing. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Which takes time, of course, but oh well. Yeah. <laughs> if you really don't like your, you know, thunder resistance or something, I don't know, then just do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The the next one that I would like to touch on is the repeating shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, this requires a simple or martial weapon with the ammunition property, and it will require attunement. This magic weapon grants a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it when it's used to make a ranged attack, and it ignores the loading property if the item has it. If if you load no ammunition in the weapon, it produces its own, automatically creating one piece of magic ammunition when you make a ranged attack with it. The ammunition created by the weapon vanishes the instant after it hits or misses a target. Dude, you no longer have to go buy arrows. Also, this is an amazing item for a fighter that uses a crossbow. Like, any crossbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because a lot yeah. of the fighter attack actions get used for reloading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they do that. And it makes it a lot more feasible, which is cool. Plus, you get to you get to just get the plus one. <laughs> yeah. So, you could also add it to an uh, already, already modified weapon. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so hear and me also, out. Also, I mean, even as an artificer, you still have two attack actions, so you'd still only shoot once if you had a crossbow. So. Yeah, yeah. But now, but hear me out. Yeah, yeah. You're in a volcano. <laughs> There's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm hearing. I'm hearing. As somebody just tackled this lich into this volcano. You run up to the side. You don't like either of these guys. So you shoot not once, but twice, hitting each of them, and killing them both. Wow. It's a very different kind story. Of... <laughs> that was took a dark was, turn was a, there. That was a very dark turn. <laughs> Jeez. Who's the BBG now, lich? Take that. <laughs> Get a, one crossbow bolt into your back as you burn a blade in lava. And I'm just That's... imagining, like, the uh, nameless character that could possibly be tackling a lich into a lava pit um, that we definitely already didn't tell the story. So, like, literally everyone is inside on this joke. Um, <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, he's, like, shooting up out of his water walk part, and you're just like, no. And you shoot him in, like, the throat as he's coming up. Like, he's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> He just like starts plummeting back again. Just like it's like enough. It's enough momentum stopping to like make it so he can't reach it anymore, and he falls back into the lava. Like his character is too perfect. He needed to, he needed to be put down. <laughs> we needed to tie up a couple of loose ends. 
we've got we've got bad morality in this party and we can't have him showing us up all the time <laughs> he was leaving the party soon anyway <laughs> <laughs> i mean anybody could be you know this is a specific story of course so it's just a random uh, random idea you know yeah yeah, yeah. A lot of people end up in, in uh, volcanoes with liches. You know, I feel like it's pretty common. So, yeah. At least it should be. <laughs> I have a feeling that. Uh... Oh wait, never mind. <clears throat> <laughs> but you know what would save him though? Like if he did, if you did try something like that. Hmm. Sure. What? <laughs> if you were to. For some reason, fall into lava and crawl your way out onto the sand, and you were to uh, look up at your former brother after losing all of your limbs. Unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what that could be talking about. And then they were to steal your laser sword for some reason. <laughs> Being the artifice you are, I'm sure you have oh, no. one. Now, now you're defenseless. You have no weapon. What do you do? Now what do you do? Oh, well, uh, you you just lay there until you can build yourself a sweet set of arcane propulsion armor. <laughs> <laughs> you and your no limbs can go and build yourself arcane propulsion armor. You did it with your teeth, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Prerequisites. You have to be level 14, and you have to have a suit of armor. And this requires attunement. Uh, this armor is pretty sweet. Okay. I gotta say. The wearer of this armor gains these benefits. Uh, the wearer's walking speed increases by five feet. So you go from mm. zero, because you have no legs, to five feet. That's pretty sweet. Nice. <laughs> the armor includes no gauntlets, each of which is a magic melee weapon that can be wielded only when the hand is holding nothing. Which you can never hold anything, so you're good there. Well, you're you, you lost your arms too. <laughs> no, no, that that comes in later. Oh, the sorry. wearer is proficient with the gauntlets, and each one deals one d8 force damage on a hit, and has the thrown property with a uh, normal range of twenty feet and a long range of sixty feet. When thrown, the gauntlet detaches and flies at the uh, the tax target, then immediately returns to the wearer and reattaches. Hmm. The armor can't be removed against the wearer's will. So Iron Man, looking at you. Uh -huh. Tried to remove his armor and stuff. Doesn't work. Yeah. And if the wearer is missing any limbs, the armor replaces those limbs. Hands, arms, feet, legs, or similar appendages. The replacements function identically to the par body parts they replace. So could it even replace? Never mind. Yes. <clears throat> now I just I just feel like it's <laughs> yes. important to point this out. Uh, you know they could have gone. Head, obviously. They could have gone with absolutely any damage type here and yet force 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 damage yeah. what why do you say it like that michael we're yeah, talking about I, a I random know, lava encounter i don't know what it is man something about the encounter just seems so we're talking about a random lava encounter familiar <clears throat> look all i'm saying is you can shoot force out of your hands out of your purely robotic <laughs> body that you now can never leave <laughs> Um, because you got your you own limbs cut off on. in a volcano. It's, it's, vol it's, it's like it's... poetic justice. And also that... you went from zero to five walking speeds. So, so you just like dramatically walk around all the time. Yeah, but you see, the thing is you just shoot your arms off and just like True. deal force damage. <laughs> and you know what? You're an artificer and you stole your laser sword. You probably just made a new laser sword. Yeah, exactly. Just made a new one. <laughs> you... Changed the color though to show character development. You've just mm -hmm, become mm -hmm. Iron Man if Iron Man was on Baywatch. <laughs> I feel like this. I feel like this, this reference was lost on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I completely got the reference. <laughs> Mustafar. <laughs> um. So. So. I knew the reference. So. So artificer infusions. <laughs> uh, this isn't my next item, but I feel like uh, you guys should look up radiant weapon. That might be a good laser sword. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not my next item. My next item is uh, the. No, that's just serpent. advice. 
Yeah, yes, that's... that's just advice. Uh, my next item is the Mind Sharpener. This is my last uh, infusion to talk about. And uh, this one it has no prerequisite, so you can do it at whatever level you want. You can get this right off the bat. You can do a suit of armor. <laughs> it requires a suit of armor. Or robes. Hmm, sounds like you could do this underneath your armor or over your armor. And you could have two. Interesting. Anyways, this infused item can send a jolt of... Uh, jolt to the wearer to refocus their mind. The item has four charges. When the wearer fails a constitution saving throw to maintain a uh, concentration on a spell, the wearer can use its reaction to expend one of the item's charges to succeed instead. The item regains 1d4 expended charges daily at dawn. Now, you guys are saying, Jake, that isn't that crazy. Artificers are only half casters. But... I would like to point out one of the spells that Artificers has. And I feel like it's a spell that you really don't want to stop concentrating on. And that spell is Haste. Whoever the heck you're hasting, I'm pretty sure you're not going to want to stop hasting them. Or you're, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure you don't want to stop hasting them. You want to keep that haste up. And say you're hasting somebody and you take a butt ton of damage. You have no chance at succeeding this con save. You gotta roll a 20, or you fail. What, so you, you get your, your all your arms and legs cut off? I don't know. You roll your dice, <laughs> you fail, inevitably, most likely, you know. Odds are. 5% chance that you succeed, but, you know, today it was 95%. And, uh, you don't want to stop concentrating on haste, so you keep concentrating. It's just that simple. Or, you know, other things that could be important, like invisibility. Or uh, enlarge reduce that could be a big one, you know. Fly, see, see, I would this sure as heck like a... hate to stop concentrating on fly while I'm like hundreds of feet in the air. This this sounds like the perfect thing uh, for a villain in a uh, anime movie that's non-canon. Now we're getting way too specific. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys really took this joke. A... You just took it and ran with it. I'm not gonna lie. This I I said this now, at the beginning see, of the episode. That now this we're is getting the it, see, specific. The thing is, now two. we're getting into like non-canon anime movies that most people <laughs> probably have never even seen. <laughs> and if they haven't, I feel sorry for them because it's a great movie. Like, I said at the I'm, beginning that this. Is I'm not even sure what movie two. he's talking about at this point, and I'm uh, pretty sure I've seen it. Uh, you you definitely have. Uh, someone should have died in the movie. Oh, lots of people should have died in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had to say. <laughs> um, you know, I feel it's like... It's non-canon, so... You know, I feel like at the beginning of the episode, I said that this was oddly specific episode two, and I really hate to say it, but I actually do think that now. <laughs> you know what? Actually, since it's non-canon, it, it, people should have died, because yeah. there would be literally been no repercussions. Yeah. But we digress. <laughs> we digress. You digress. <laughs> well, no, two of us digress. So it's yeah, a we, we collectively digress to you. you. Digress. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why we said we. <laughs> hey, Michael, you got an item for us? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever wanted to, like, <laughs> hold a wand? And like no. <laughs> go in an arc, like a wide arcing motion while casting a spell, and be able to like curve it around in like a circle or something. Not really. Wands aren't my favorite arcane focus. I like. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could do the same thing with like a rod or a staff. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I, 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 I... <laughs> rod. Yeah. So, so for this one, all you need is a rod, staff, or a wand. It's going to require attunement. It's called the enhanced Maybe arcane focus. Uh, ah. While holding this item, a creature gains a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls. In addition, the creature ignores half cover when making a spell attack. The bonus increases to plus two when you reach 10th level in this class. That's why I like to think of it as like you can kind of curve spells because you ignore half cover. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I see what you're putting down. I see what you, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Whatnot. And also, yeah, yeah. I think we all know the iconic movie scene that I referenced. That's been my TED talk. So... Um, we, as a collective of all three of the travelers, uh, decided that there was one infusion that we wanted to talk about that none of us would claim as one of our favorite infusions, because it's just obviously one of the best infusions, 
And also, I don't think there's a single artificer that wouldn't take this infusion at least once, just because of how good it is. And we're talking about the replicating a magical item infusion. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. And you can take it multiple times. It's this yeah, is one can. that you can take multiple times. It there's a list. There's a, <laughs> there's a long list of items that you can take. Mm-hmm. Um that you can replicate. And it gets there's some pretty good items pretty on the good. list. There's an alchemy jug. Like you can't beat that, man. That's level one, baby. You got mayonnaise, mayonnaise. for days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, we've got time in this episode. I don't feel bad about reading all of them. So at second oh, level, God, which no. Is, nope, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. At second level, <laughs> at second level, you can choose to make any of the items of alchemy jug, bag of holding, cup of. Uh, Cap of water breathing, goggles of night, rope of climbing, sending stones, magic wand of de- or wand of magic detection, and wand of secrets. All of those are pretty good. At sixth level, you could choose to make boots of elvenkind, cloak of elvenkind, cloak of the mana ray, eyes of charming, gloves of thievery, lantern of revealing, pipes of haunting, ring of water walking. All of those also pretty good. Um, at tenth level, this is the longest list. You can make boots of striding and stra- uh, striding and springing, boots of the winterlands. Braces of archery, brooch of shielding, cloak of protection, cloak of protection. Sorry, eye of the eagle, uh, gauntlets of ogre power, gloves of missile snaring, gloves of swimming and climbing, hat of disguise, headband of intellect, helm of telepathy, ma- uh, medallion of thoughts, necklace of adaptation, periapt of wound closure, <clears throat> pipes of su- uh, pipes of the sewers, quiver of Alona, ring of jumping, ring of mind shielding, slippers of spider climbing, winged boots. Was also pretty good. And at 14th level, you can reach up as high of the items as Amulet of Health, Belt of Hill Giant Strength, Boots of Levitation, Boots of Speed, Braces of Defense, Cloak of the Bat, dimension sha- uh, Dimensional Shackles, Gem of Seeing, Horde of Blasting, Ring of Free Action, Ring of Protection, and Ring of the Ram. All of those, um, you just make the item. So, you know, some of them have attunement, some of them don't. Uh, you don't really care because you're an artificer and you've got to take six attunement slots by level 18. So, yeah. There's some really good items in there, though. Honestly. Like, I feel like every party has the staple bag of holding that's like the party inventory that everyone wants to buy so that way they don't have to worry about like having one person who ha- like splitting up the party inventory that is technically on different people's bags so that way if someone's bag gets stolen or something they don't know what they have as a party and what they don't because technically it's everyone's stuff but technically it's also in one person's bag and you should you should think about where you're putting it but you don't really want to bother with that so you just kind of say it's in the bag of holding which is the party's inventory which yeah. this person carries which i feel like a lot of parties do um, pretty much all of my parties do that. Um, but yeah, so I think that's like that's level two. You can make a bag of holding. <laughs> it's pretty pretty great. <laughs> but yeah. That's just uh all the items that you can make as an artificer. Yeah, Those it's ones, uh it's pretty sick. Yeah. You know the craft so well that you could just make a new one after you know about it one. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty cool. There are uh, there are sixteen infusions listed in Tasha's. We have listed ten of them. Uh, True. You are free Here. to do the research and look at the other six. Everything in Tasha's is sick. Mm-hmm. Just uh, like yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 With <Anyway>. that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey guys yeah yeah where would people go if they wanted to learn more about the travelers i don't well, know ben you tell me why do you think i asked <laughs> <laughs> so we could ask you yeah uh, well i would say the best place is to go to our website travelers tips and tales.com that makes sense and there there's links to all of our other social medias which to be honest we have a lot of uh, there's not links to all of them. <laughs> Some of them you have to find. <laughs> <laughs> like our Tumblr, Travelers Tips Tales. Uh-huh. What else? Or 
our Instagram, Travelers Tips and Tales. Uh huh. What else could be there? Possibly. Our Twitch, Travelers Tips oh. and Tales. Oh. oh our YouTube, okay. Travelers Tips and Tales. Our Twitter. At Tips Tales. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to support us uh, on Patreon, there's a Patreon Traveler's Tips and Tales where we get some we got some cool rewards for peoples. Like some cool homebrew stuff that I really need to make more of. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, early access to all of our stuff. And you get shouted out if you're at a certain tier. Kind of like uh, my mom. And Dalton. Also, and Dalton. Dalton. <laughs> yeah. Local friend of the podcast. Oh yeah. If you if you got some cool stories, uh you you can also email them to us uh mm-hmm. at travelers tips and tales at gmail.com. And also yeah. uh we upload all of these episodes both to um a bunch of different podcast platforms, but also to YouTube. And if you want to check us out on YouTube, you can help support us there by subscribing and liking, commenting, and whatnot uh, at Traveler's Tips and Tales on YouTube as well. Yeah. Also, you get to look at our lovely logo the whole time that the podcast goes on. And, or you can put it on a different window. Who cares? And if you, uh, you're you feeling very supportive, uh, support your local game stores. Yeah. The, the four that we uh, promote through and uh, promote them as well. We got Forgotten Path Games in Vacaville, where our group was formed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got mm-hmm. Mad Alpaca Games in Fairfield, Davis mm-hmm. Cards and Games in Davis, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Hobby Badger Games in West Sacramento. Mm-hmm. 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 The people there are super neat, super knowledgeable about like everything that they sell. Uh, and True. if they don't know anything in particular about something they sell, most of them, from like the talks that I've had with them, I get the impression that they would very much so like to look up anything that they don't already know to be that much more informed on it. And also they would probably know who to ask too. Yeah. So they could probably help you with that. And a lot of these stores, if they don't have exactly what you're looking for uh, in, in the realm of like board games, uh, tabletop role-playing games, war games, stuff like that. uh, A lot of times they have suppliers that they can order it through. So you can still support them. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes they do like custom orders and stuff like that too. Yeah. But you'll never know if you don't go up and ask them. Yeah. So do yeah. it. Always support yeah. your local game stores. Yeah. Is neat. They're, they're nerds just like you, but they decided to open a business. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's really it. And they, they need money to, to maintain yes. their business. Actually so true. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like they're literally just the same people as us, but also they're like, let's sell stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, thank you guys for joining us today. Until next time, adventure, adventure away. <laughs>